Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and these are my favorite cruiser jackets. First is a killer option for cruisers who ride without armor, the black brand cutthroat. Always buy a jacket the way you want to wear it. And this cutthroat was sold without armor, so it fits without armor. And the shoulders are slim, the back isn't baggy. Black brand didn't even sew armor pockets into the mesh liner because they know this leather was cut to work without it. On that note, the cowhide is thick, definitely north of 1.2 millimeters. So even without a full suit of armor's impact protection, the sliding safety is admirable. The cutthroat flows air better than most with two big exhaust vents around the back. I have two bicep vents. I have two chest vents that'll actually double as pockets. And then the cuffs have zipper gussets. So undoing those, We'll also get some air up your sleeves. Staying warm is more of a challenge. This removable quilted liner is filled with hopes and dreams and not much else. I had to layer a hoodie underneath during the Lowrider S review since we were filming in the middle of the night and the Cutthroat's insulation is so minimal. A couple complaints. Black Brand is Tucker's new private label replacing River Road, which I doubt anyone will miss. But unfortunately, BB forgot how RR used to give us really nice cargo pockets, great for storing a baseball cap, Where's Jax Teller gonna keep his handgun now? Also, Black Brand's mascot is a skull, which is about as trendy as platform shoes and tie-dye. The love affair between cruisers and badass skulls is long over. Maybe I can stomach a few on the interior liner, but to put a little scully on my zipper and another one on the waist adjustment strap, they're killing me, Black Brand. Finally, the leather is top grain, meaning it will not develop a natural patina over time. That's kind of a bummer for an heirloom quality piece, but I still think this is the best armor free jacket for 400 bucks and it fits great. I'm 6'3 with a 39 inch chest and this medium is much less boxy than in the River Road days. Next up is my fully armored choice, the Joe Rocket Richmond. Before you freak out at me for recommending a purplish cruiser jacket, no two things. This is actually ox blood or so I'm told and it also comes in a very ordinary shade of black. So don't stress. Back to the reason I chose it, the Richmond is reinforced with a full suite of vault CE approved armor, shoulders, elbows, and back. I mean, just look at the size of this spine protector. You could survive the blitz under here. It also has really solid belt loops, meaning I can hook the jacket onto my pants, prevent it from rotting up. That is a huge safety benefit if I were to go for a slide. The world would be a better place if more jackets had them. Pockets are boring, two hand, one chest, one Napoleon, and ventilation is even worse, there isn't any. But the leather is actually fairly thin, so this is still a comfortable jacket for middle temperatures. And unlike Black Brand, Joe Rocket did a gorgeous job of branding. The button closures at the sleeves, the waist adjustment straps, and then up here at the neck are all stamped with a maple leaf. And then on the right arm and around the back of the neck, we see Rocket appear in the underlying undyed leather. It's pure class. Fitment wise, I wear a medium in Joe Rocket and that fits my 39 inch chest just fine. At six foot three, the arms are definitely a little bit short, but the Richmond has shoulder gussets and helps to keep my sleeves down when I assume the riding position. I'd also like to call your attention to the quilted leather on each shoulder and at the lower back. There's no technical benefit at all. In fact, the seams probably make it a little bit weaker, but damn, it looks good. For 500 bucks, I think this is the best looking fully armored cruiser jacket. Now, what if I need a sportier cut from my cruiser jacket? Maybe I ride a cafe racer or a Harley Sportster, whatever it is, it necessitates a slightly tucked riding position. The Alpine Stars Oscar Charlie fits that stance well. It's very trim and slim, similar to what you'd get on an A-Star sport jacket. These waist adjustment straps even have three stops, which is more fit precision than you'll find on most. And it also gets the ultra thin bio armor that A-Stars does, which helps keeps everything tight. Also these pre-curved sleeves, are no strangers to reaching for clip-ons. All in all, this is a great sport cruiser jacket. Last year, I recommended the Joe Rocket V Sport instead, which I doubt any of you will remember. To be honest though, it's probably still the better jacket, especially with its full back protector compared to the Oscar Charlie's empty pocket. But the V Sport is getting quite long in the tooth. So looking forward, this is the best sport cruiser option I see. Now there's an elephant in the room and he's wearing skinny jeans because yes, this is a hipster style. The brown version even more so. But remember that the original cafe racers were some of the most ballsy riders in history, doing 100 miles per hour on hacked up Brit bikes. So know that these vintage stripes actually point to them, not the Gen Y wannabes. Moving inside, I get a removable flannel liner. 80 gram insulation won't be enough for March in Montreal, but it does look and feel nice. And then I get three of those cargo pockets that I was nattering on about earlier. 
one of which is actually going to be trimmed in leather, and all of which are accessible through the flannel liner itself. My one complaint is the patching. This shoulder badge is fine, but the chest patch looks like it's been chewed on. The rest of the jacket isn't that distressed, so this is just uncalled for. Fitment-wise, the Oscar Charlie has really long arms. You're certainly not going to run out of sleeve when you lean over into that semi-tucked riding position. And that's part of the reason why this is such a great sport cruising jacket. Leather thickness is just south of 1.1 millimeters, less than race grade. So if you're planning on going for a slide at 300 kilometers an hour, don't. Also, this is full grain stuff that will develop a natural patina over time. Whether or not that makes it any easier to spend 700 bucks on Italian leather, I don't know. Now, a cheap option. This is the Z1R45 and an MSRP is below 300 bucks, which is rare because cows are expensive. Basically, we're looking at that black brand cutthroat all over again. Armor free, thick 1.2 to 1.3 millimeter leather, great ventilation on the chest, the biceps and the back, and there's a removable thermal liner that's more show than go. Z1R does embarrass Black Brand in a few places. This piping is reflective, which is a safety benefit that Black Brand forgot. Also, there's some added ventilation holes underneath the armpits. Not the most elegant solution, but damn, it makes a big difference for staying cool. Plus, I have waist zippers for getting fat and a dropped back for covering my ass neither of which came on the cutthroat. Also, remember how Black Brand failed to give us those interior cargo pockets? Well, Z1R gives me two, both trimmed in leather, and they even have these weird internal elasticated loops. Although for the life of me, I can't figure out what they're for. So Z1R has pulled their usual move and undercut the competition. This is an aggressively underpriced jacket, and in our experience, it consistently exceeds people's expectations. Only downside is that the cowhide doesn't feel quite as nice. For some people, that's all that matters when buying a leather jacket. The fit is good. I'm six foot three, 39 inch chest, wearing a medium. The only thing I notice is that the arms are a little bit short, but Z1R gave the 45 shoulder gussets, so it's not so bad. My two textile favorites are the same as last year, so if you want a relaxed rundown, watch that video. If not, prepare for some speedy info. Icon 1000 Base Hawk looks and feels like a hoodie. The main chassis is stretch fabric cinched tight with elastics for a very slim fit. Bigger guys should size up, but for scrawny folk like me, this will be the most comfortable fully armored jacket you've ever worn. Speaking of which, yes, full D3O viscoelastic armoring in the elbows, the shoulders, and the back, plus the sliding zones are done in ballistic nylon and leather. Cock ups include failing to put leather on the lower back. Doesn't Icon know most of us slide on our asses? Also, the hood isn't removable, and even with these cinches done up tight, it still slaps against my helmet at speed, which is annoying. And then there's very good ventilation on the chest on both sides, above each arm like this. And then underneath each arm, there's a vent at the armpits. But Icon forgot to put an exhaust vent at the back, so the base hawk is needlessly stuffy. Then we have the Black Brand Street Team, replacement for the River Road Lachlan, which itself was a doppelganger for a Carhartt jacket. It has that casual workman style, especially in the brown colorway, which I much prefer to this Dell Black. The jacket has many jacket things, including a snap-down collar that won't slap my face, some reflective piping, and looky here, Icon, exhaust vents. Water-resistant nylon and polyester make this the best jacket on my list for getting wet. And then the interior liner is 37.5 Kokona, which is a fancy fabric that keeps you cool. The old Lachlan had a thermal liner for staying warm. It's apples and oranges, really, so I can't say which is better, but at least this one does scrunch down into its own pocket, which is kind of handy. The other big improvement over the old Lachlan is armor. This one gets a full suite of D3O viscoelastic stuff, and that's a big bonus. The buttons? Oh, for Pete's sake, enough with the ruddy skulls already. First thing I'm gonna do is take a file to this shit. Both of my non-leather options cost $350, give or take, meaning that they're both slightly overpriced. And that's it for my favorite cruising jackets. Thanks for watching.